Now stage three is where you start to get some mastery over attention and awareness and being able to stay with your um, meditation object, which can be your breath and we'll be using that. Um, stage three, you'll start to have longer periods where you're, we you have uninterrupted focus and fewer distractions. So you get some mastery of it, this is good. Um, but the thing is start to realize is that your distractions arise a lot <laughs> and quickly and your mind, as it forgets, you start to see um, more of that awareness because you become more aware because more of those moments of awareness of you seeing your forgetfulness start to arise. So these are actually um, opportunities to see more subtle mind processes happening. So take this time as, oh, I'm being even more distracted and I'm more aware of my distractions. Think of it as this is me experiencing more of my awareness. And no matter what you do, you're, you're progressing down the path. You can't help but progress as you keep doing this. The only way you stop progressing is if you just stop meditating. And even, you know, with your life, you're learning how to focus, learning how to, you know, do things. And, you know, those things help. Um, but your meditation practice will take you further along down that road. And it helps with leadership and creativity. So let's... Um, Let's talk through this a little bit more, but what, how, what are you thinking in terms of stages in, with the experience of stage three and the insight you gain from awareness? Is this something that is a new concept and do you have questions about it? Okay, sounds like it's pretty clear. I hope it's freeing. <laughs> Is this freeing for you? I find this liberating. That's a really good question. And it's helpful to um, think about the number of breaths or um, sometimes people use time. I would say that you're in stage three. Let's see, I wrote a specific note about this. If you um, can be on the breath, I think for good, you know, I don't have it right here, but I'll say that for stage two, if you can count 10 breaths and get back on what I call it getting back on the surfboard or getting back to your breath, then you're in a solid stage two. I think stage three is if you can hold your attention for like five minutes or 10 minutes. I'll get back to you on what that is when I check it, look at my notes. But yeah, you can have like, um, sort of those uh, those benchmarks in each of these stages. And I'll actually um, share some of this in, in the comments in YouTube. So you guys can um, look over there if you want to get the answers to that. Okay. I'm actually right now writing this um, this this class as I'm as I'm teaching it, although I've taught it a few times, but those benchmarks are really helpful. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay, so why don't I um, introduce to you um, some methods that you can use to stay with your breath a little bit more. Um, there's two things you can do. So feeling yourself breathe is something that can be very conceptual and what you want to be doing is you want to be actually experiencing what it's really like. And one very simple way of following your breath, so following is a technique, is you pay attention to the beginning 
and the end of your in-breath. And then you do the same for your out-breath. So you just notice, ah, in, out, and then out, in. Now, if you find that is like really simple and easy to do, like you do that for 10 breaths, you can then start to pay attention to the middle of your breath and just notice what it's like. So pay a little bit closer attention to it. And that's it. And you will find different ways of experiencing your breath that go beyond that. That's just two very simple instructions for you to explore as much as you want. And that's good. If you explore even more deeply than that, you'll find that you're able to stay with your breath longer. And being able to do that helps make you have more progress and in getting more focus for longer. Um, this practice is um, a shamatha practice that the Mind Illuminated um, talks about. And it's a practice that's yoked with vipassana. So in the first class, I actually mistakenly called this uh, purely a shamatha practice. It's actually a yoked shamatha and vipassana practice. And if you haven't heard those words before, shamatha is um, a form of meditation that's focused on concentration and focus with a um, intention to have a deeper concentration. And that stabilizes your mind in a way to get the deep insights and exciting sort of sexy things that people think about when it comes to meditation, like learning insights and seeing things that you hadn't seen before and even having unusual experiences, mystical experiences. All of that is also available. But concentration is kind of like if you're a musician playing your scales, um, it's like the basic strength and muscle you need to be able to get to that. And vipassana are basically the techniques you use with your stronger attention to be able to get into these states. So that's what we're doing. And with the um, second technique, um, what you'll do is you can you know, like focus on your breath a little bit more or you can deal with distraction. And the way you do that is you notice a thought come up about your car and where it's parked. And instead of letting yourself mind wander, just give it a little label. You could just say car or thought and then move on. Um, you could even, if like thinking of a word is too much, you can even just think of like a tick, like, like I think of a metronome tick, literally like a, a sound to just note that. And this is a practice called noting. It's actually a, an insight practice. So you're getting into the blend of the Vipassana techniques pretty quick here. So again, two ways. You can focus on your breath, looking at the ins and out, or you can deal with its distraction, or you can do both, right? by making a little tick or a word. And I'm just gonna keep it very simple. Now, again, in this practice, people are at different levels. You can just stick with those two techniques or you can um, take those techniques to go even deeper. Totally great. Um, one thing that is common that happens is a lot of body sensations will come up. And in the book, he talks about dealing with pain. So, I'm going to think of talking about it in two ways, dealing with pain, but also finding pleasure. Because I think it's helpful to find, not like be looking out for negative things all the time, but it's also really helpful and it makes you help um, more, make more progress and excitement about your practice by looking for the pleasure. So if you start to um, think about you know, your breath focus and then your noting, you can also think of the pleasure seeking and the pain and how you deal with it. So let's look at pleasure seeking first. Um, you may start to feel like you're getting into a flow or it's feeling really good. And then just go deeper into it. Think about like sinking in. So you start to feel a pleasurable thing. Just start looking for that even in the breath and then sink into it. Okay. Chudal doesn't talk about that, but that is something I recommend at this stage. Okay sinking in. And 
if you have pain that gets in the way of that, think about lightly, not tensely, but lightly taking a look at that and, and seeing where it is in your body. So that pain may be in your body. It can also be in your mind. Like you might have a painful thought about, I don't know, an ex that you just broke up with, or you might have, you know, um, stress about work. So I want to encourage you to notice where it is in your body. And what you're doing, you're splitting apart the thought and feeling and the bodily sensation. It's very powerful. And if you do just that, that's great. That's you dealing with the pain. And if you want to go deeper, you can actually hold it as your meditation object, that bodily sensation for a while, and notice it disappear. Now, it may not disappear, and that's okay. And then you can just do something else. If you need to scratch that itch, go ahead. There's no one who's going to, you know, wrap you on the knuckles for that. But just play with it and see what happens. Okay? Now, I've just stated four techniques that can be a lot. Um, are there any questions about them? And I'll summarize once more. Paying attention to your breath very closely, in and outs, or the middle. Noting, which is like a word or a tick about the distraction. And it's noticing pleasant sensations and sinking a little bit deeper into it with your breath. Or noticing a distraction and just loosely taking it apart as body versus thought. And then maybe playing with that as an object for a bit and watching it disappear. Cool? Okay. Questions? Okay, I'm having a feeling that you guys really want to meditate. <laughs> awesome. Oh, and we have someone who's just joined, Alice. Um, I want to welcome you on, from online. Um, you're, it's totally optional for you to uh, participate, but if you would like to ask any questions, I want to hold space for you to do that. Um, do you have any questions so far? Okay. I'll take that. You are okay. Don't have any questions. Okay. Um, let me just get my phone out. So this class goes until 6.45. How about we do a 30-minute meditation or we could do 40 minutes. Any um, preference? Okay. <laughs> Monica. Okay, Monica looks very pleased at doing a 40 minute. Okay, so I'm going to open my Insight Timer. If you don't have this app, this is a really great app for uh, meditation. It has a little timer and a sound. Um, I have a light sound that goes on during uh, the meditation. If you prefer not and you prefer to be silent, let me know. Um, but it will be, I'll set this for 40 minutes. And I will guide you for the first probably 20 minutes and then we'll just go without anything else. Alrighty. Starting now. Okay, be here now. And that's the realm we are in of just right now. And remember your intention for being here. Have your spine aligned in a nice way, like boulders sitting on top of each other with no effort at all.
Now loosely place your attention on your meditation object, your breath. And at the same time as you loosely notice your breath, with your awareness, notice the room. Notice sounds happening around you. Notice your awareness of these things. And come back to your breath. and just loo hold it loosely with your attention as awareness happens and things arise and fall. And I'll take you through the techniques and you can take them or not, depending on how you are drawn to or feel. I want you to feel free with this toolbox of techniques. So stage two will simply count your breaths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Counting in cycles of ten helps stabilize your tension on your breath. And you may even find it pleasurable as your breath is held loosely in your attention with the awareness of all things arising surrounding it. Feels good. Also stage two practice you get distracted by something, which is totally normal because our mind is a raging ocean and you're on a surfboard, your breath. As soon as you fall off and you notice you're in that raging ocean, just notice you're in awareness and just get back on your board. Aha, I can get back on my board. That's stage two awareness. Just hop back on. Now, if you'd like, you can play with stage three practices. 
especially if you notice you can keep your attention in your breath for an entire 10 breath cycle. That's when you know you are ready for this stage three practice. Following. Follow your breath by noticing how it begins and ends with your in-breath. Just notice the detail. You can look at the tip of your nose where it feels there, or your chest, wherever you like. But what does it really feel like? In, out. You might also try paying attention to what happens in between. You might even notice that it's a little jerky or that it feels like it has a rush of air. Whatever you see, experience it, explore. A more advanced version of this is connecting. If you find following simple, then try comparing how your in and out breaths are different and ponder that a little bit. Just notice and explore it. Here's a second stage three technique, noting. Maybe you notice your stomach grumble. Just give it a word, grumble. Or a tick, then let it go. Third practice, stage three. Notice pleasurable sensations about your breath and exploring it. And sink into it a little bit. Feel more of that pleasure. Keep on exploring. As you feel the flow of that pleasure, you might find it interrupted by pain. 
or a physical distraction. The fourth technique in stage three, you can take that sensation, whether it's bodily or in your mind, and look for the physical body version of that feeling and identify it. You could even hold it in your attention for a little while, see if it disappears. Just keep on noticing and exploring it in a new way. Discover it and see how the pain diminishes. If it's too much, that's okay. You can always try again and let it go for now. But try seeing it disappear or attenuate. And there's no need to try all of these techniques. If you only remember one, that's great. There's plenty of time to go back and explore the others. You can just come back to this video at any time.
Okay, slowly come back. Slowly come back. Welcome back. <laughs> 40 minutes. How is that for you guys? Sebastian, you have a smile and you're nodding. Want to share? Yeah, it's very intense, very relaxing. It's great. Awesome. Um, what techniques did you try? Okay, um, I just realized I forgot to ask people to use the mic when you're sharing a little bit. Um, so uh, you just shared about using counting and um, you're sinking in a little bit um, and just a variety of different things. Did you find that helpful to keep you going through the 40 minutes? Absolutely. Yeah. Can I ask you to pick up the mic now? <laughs> Is this Oh, great. Okay. So are all, all very helpful. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, while you were doing that, did you find anything interesting appear or happen? Yeah, actually, yes. Um, a couple times, uh, some very powerful sensations, almost like I was, uh, I couldn't move. And then a couple, uh, there's probably two or three really strong visual images and patterns kind of showed up too. So yeah, it was, it was, it was very unexpected. That's really cool. So um, I asked that because, you know, during this practice and going into these techniques, even as early as stage three, um, or which may be advanced for a lot of people, um, you'll start to have these sensations and new things come up and one thing about this practice is you're practicing keeping your attention and awareness in a balanced way on, on the breath. Not just your attention being really stiff, not just awareness and being floaty, but kind of both. There's a balance you're finding. And that brings on some pretty interesting stuff. But what I encourage you to do is even when you sink in or you feel these things, I encourage you to get back on the surfboard and explore that breath because at this um, time when you are a, um, if you are a new meditator, are you a new meditator, Sebastian? Uh, sl many years slow on and off. Okay, on and off, but you're experienced, right? But sometimes it feels like you're new when you're coming back, right? Um, and, and I would say even for, you know, someone who's experienced as you, and definitely for people who are new, it's good to just get back to the breath and staying there so you can build your meditation muscles. Because this isn't, you know, it's like a skill, it's an art. And you'll find you'll reap the awards very well that way. But, you know, all those cool things that come up, you'll get to explore them as much as you want um, and, and all the time, <laughs> if you can stick with that practice for a while. Great, thank you so much. Um, Jimmy, you're nodding, nodding, I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> So just tell me what you tried and what you experienced. Sure. Um, I I tried. Well, first I, I'm I'm very much a beginner. I started meditating regularly maybe only a month ago. Okay, great. Um, and I had just been. Fo I think I focused a lot on counting my breaths and even, you know, counting it very deliberately. Um, that that took kind of a while for my mind to wrap around definitely felt like a bit of a journey from my mind wandering to kind of i got into this little state of acknowledging kind of some things that I, that that were distracting me earlier on and then by the end it was interesting when you were asking me to kind of like get back to it it did feel like kind of like a physiological state of like I need to 
gently let myself back into reality. So, yeah, did did do some of the the ticks as well, and I think it was interesting to kind of notice that um, wane a little bit over time. Yeah. Oh, that's great! What did that do for you? Do you have words for that? It, um, it's hard to say. It, it, you know, I have tried thinking about just acknowledging and accepting invasive thoughts and all that kind of stuff in the past, and then the using the the tick practice. It almost it, for uh, it's hard to describe. It just seemed to kind of. Um, make it, make me think of it less. I don't know. I don't it's know. cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard to describe. Um, and then and then I did start a little bit of focusing on my di diaphragm as well. That seemed to help. Separate, oh, great! But, yeah. That's great. Okay, so you were like experiencing your diaphragm as part of your experience of your breath. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Yeah. And really cool that you discovered something with that tick, <laughs> that it kind of attenuated the distraction. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Okay, and you have and you got so deep that at the end you were like, "Oh, I need to. I'm leaving." <laughs> yeah. To another yeah, reality. Yeah. It, it kind of. It, it, like there was some kind of sensation around my my uh, sinuses or my eyes or something like that. Yeah. Well, when was the last time that you meditated for forty minutes? I've never meditated for forty <laughs> minutes. Yeah, yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, you can see, like, how did that feel? Was it hard? Easy? Was it? Um, how was it for you? I, I was surprised. I think I, it, it did to me kind of go in phases of like you know, earlier on. I was talking about. I think I had to get past some serious distractions and then, you know, which kind of lends itself to maybe a longer session, right? So maybe it took me, who knows how long, 10 to 20 minutes to get through like a little bit of stuff that was just really distracting me. And then once I got there, I could start focusing much more on my breath. And then from there, trying to get deeper and deeper and less and less distracted by whatever it may be, whether it's like the things passing us outside or whatever thought or thoughts are invading my, my mind. Yeah. That's great. How helpful was it that you had things to do with the distraction? Yeah, like the extremely. And, yeah. I think especially when I started um, getting into the, the breath counting and as the, as the ticks became a little less kind of like pervasive and focusing a little bit more on like how my breath was feeling that really got me into a, a place where I could kind of uh, really dig in for a little bit, I guess. Yeah. That's so awesome. And what I want to highlight there is that, you know, with these techniques, you have things to do that allow you to stay with the object and to stay in meditation. That's why it's so great to try all these different things. At the same time, you know, some people get like really caught up in all these and there's no need to do that. I'm trying to create this like feeling of looseness, just pick up something. And it would seem like it was pretty easy. Like you didn't feel like you had to do a bunch of stuff, right? Okay, you're nodding, that's great. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for speaking to the mic. Okay, you know, I would love um, if you guys, Monica or Hugh, want to share, because um, just a few of us, um, are totally optional, but, you know, just something about your experience or what you tried. Um, one thing that I felt pleasure in was, like, the, I actually couldn't tell, sometimes it was flipped, like, at the beginning and end of my breath, I think, yeah, I think at the end of the intake or at the end of the out breath there was always a little bit of pain because you're like at the end hmm. and then the beginning of the next one whether it was out breath or in breath uh felt a lot of pleasure interesting yeah so had you ever noticed that, that for a while <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah sounds like a new thing to experience yes definitely yeah and it felt very um there were moments where like the how deep my breaths were were changing mm -hmm. um and so i was noticing um 
I guess just like how the breath felt on my lips too. And, and that, I think that changed throughout the course of the meditation. Interesting. Yeah. So are you new to meditation or experienced? And um, I, I'm like in the last year new. Okay. It, yeah. So it's great. You're getting into a practice. Yeah. Like I can feel that you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, um, before um, we finish, oh, did you want to say something? Okay, great. Thanks. I, I know nothing about this approach that I've come to volunteer for, but I I sat and did, you know, some shamatha and, and did the counting of my breaths. My, my attention span is terrible, but uh, did some noting as well of thoughts, but also just like dropping into my body and mm. and just um, and kind of just being present for what emotions were coming up for me and uh, sitting with them. And you know, I, I was judgmental about that that tone coming out of your computer. It's like, oh, that ain't right. You, yeah, you're not supposed to meditate with. But that thing actually, I found it quite helpful. <laughs> You know, at least for my the, my tradition, like yeah, that's that's just wrong. But <laughs> fact, that that was great and was helpful. And for me, you know, there's lots of sounds here on 24th in this center, so I'm like easy to get into the whatever sounds there or whatever song that is. I'm just like I'm just hearing a sound, you know. But um, it was great. I, thanks a lot. Thank you for sharing that. And it's interesting how like, I actually I only started doing this sound in the in this series. I'd never done it before for some reason. It just it just came to me to try it out. And um, I, I it, it's funny, interesting traditions have their different framings around this. And I like how you just let it go. And you just like went with it. And just, you know, I'm wondering, like how sinking into your body and getting grounded with the emotions that you were experiencing, like, like, how did that, um, was that easy to, to, to come to you? Or was it something you had to work through? Yeah. Oh, you um, forgot the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm into this handshaking practice, just dropping into the body and having the body as, as opposed to the breath, as something to ground with. Feeling my feet on the floor, uh, and the connect, you know, that connection to the earth, and whatever feelings, thoughts, just trying to just feel them in a real somatic way as they come up, and just trying to be present for them. Uh, but we meditated long enough. You know that starting with shamatha and then so for me it was easy to sort of move into a place where i could sit and and be present for those feelings that's great the end of the day and so that's great so they had that that grounding practice separating your body sensations it's really it's literally a way to ground dealing with feelings and what i'm curious about is like do you remember at the moment when you let go of the sound being annoying to you what was happening? Just right away. Like, I think I let go my, my disdain for the, my contempt for the, <laughs> for that. I'm like, that's not right. I'm not supposed to do that. But it was soothing. And I think, and part of it too is, like, as a musician, like, it's, it's just a single note. And so, I can deal with that. that like a drone. Yeah, like a drone. It doesn't yeah. make me, doesn't, it doesn't piss me off. Or, you know, it's just one note. So I'm like, all right. It's rising and falling, and it's like, you know, like the breath. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. This is great. So I will introduce things that are not necessarily traditional or even in TMI, just to kind of, for the spirit of the looseness, and it may be um, controversial to some people, but I just want to have the feeling of freedom of experimentation. And that's why I like 
framing this in terms of leadership and creativity because um, again, we're using our minds and it doesn't have to be so perfect or uh, like to be able to be free, freely exploring with meditation or anything you do with your life is so awesome. Like life becomes so free and creative and just awesome. So I want to have that cre creation of meditation. And, you know, I, I once I discovered that I could just try a bunch of things and just go with it and not feel like I'm doing the right thing. Um, that's when I, my, my practice took off. So I want to encourage you to, you know, listen to these principles they are very helpful, but also be free in experimentation. Okay, so um, one thing I love to um, remind people if you are brand new to meditation, it's really hard to do these 40 minute <laughs> meditations. It's not necessary. Um, shoot, like sometimes I cannot, it's often I cannot sit for 40 minutes. So I always say one minute, three times a day, if you really just can't even get it in. I made so much progress just doing that practice for years when I was a brand new meditator. So you can always, when you start doing that, you'll find that that one minute turns into 20 minutes right away. There's just something about it. And the reason is that you start blending into your every day. So that's another thing that I want to encourage is not only this creativity, but just doing meditation at any time, because really the goal is for meditation, not to just be this thing you do once a day, but something you do all the time. That's really the goal, okay? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, for joining me in this practice. And I want to remind you again that it is a donation-based class. So if you are inspired to donate, we have um, a Venmo and uh, a desk over there. And I think um, Hugh or any of you who are online, um, you can um, go to our Venmo. I think it's SF-Dharma Collective, okay. Great, so keep on practicing. And again, I will add um, some comments to add a few more details on stage three and what the benchmarks are there. So take a look on the YouTube. All right, have a good night.